के लिए on behalf of mg family welcomes you all in this occasion of empowerment seminar that we are going to conduct in our college today we are so much delighted to have dr mohammad buheji founder international inspiration economy project and dr dunia ahmed international co-founder international institute of inspirational economy as our guest we are so much privilege to have you here sir and ma'am we are having this session to motivate our students to know something that is going to really help them i also want to extend my heartiest welcome to madam shrilekha virulkar director ng group of institution principal dr anil chobe principal uh, madam kanamma principal dr t kumar sir dr shweta bhatia madam respected faculty members and my dear students before we start our program we are going to initiate this with our traditional lamp lighting ceremony i request dr anil chobe sir to escort all our dignitaries for lighting the lamp sir please and it is 
is run by Majantamba Educational Society. It is started with basic courses like BSc, BCom, PGDC. Now since then we have progressed a lot. And today we are running three colleges, including MJ College of Nursing and MJ College of Pharmacy. And here in graduation course we offer uh, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Commerce, DBA, PGDCA, DCA, DLN, and uh, BA. Dr. Mohammad Bureji is uh, the founder of International Inspiration Economy Project, which includes international institutions. Institutes to Inspirational Economy. He carries BSc in Double Major Biomedical Engineering and Mechanical Engineering from Catholic University from Washington DC. Then he did his postgraduate studies in Medical Physics and then MBA from Aberdeen University, Scotland and South Wales, UK. His PhD is in Knowledge Economy from Brunel University, London. Dr. Buheji teaches classes that are relevant to innovation, entrepreneurship, knowledge and change management and current issues to both MBA students and undergraduates. Besides, he gives seminars on the subject of Inspiration Engineering and Resilience Engineering and Youth and Inspiration Labs. Besides being active in relevant scientific communities for institutions in the field, he has published since 2008 more than 130 peer-reviewed journals and conference papers and 23 books in the subjects of socio-economic problem solving. So, uh, it would be better to listen from him sir itself and uh, I would like to invite Dr. Dunya Anaman ma'am just for the talk. Please welcome her. Good morning everyone and it's always nice to speak when I see this young generation, coming generation, we know that you are the coming people who are going to change the whole world. So you have the whole life in front of you and you can inspire the world. Your generation is totally different than the previous generation. Let me before start, just I will start by explaining who we are as an inspiration economy. And the first thing I want to start with is something that I wish you would do in your life. Uh, I really didn't have a chance to share with you our logo. Our logo on Inspiration Economy, that maybe we will send to you, is a circle that goes like this and like this. Why I want to start with my logo, I don't know if it was Spain, there is nothing in the life go like this. Don't think that you will graduate, you are looking forward to graduate from here, you will be a student, you will get a job, you will get a good life and you will finish. There is no economy, there is no, anyone will go in his life like this. The more obstacles you have in your life, the more you will go in a different way. Always remember one day, if they didn't take him out of the train, he wouldn't be one what he done for India today. So because he got the obstacle, he became special. So the more you get obstacles in your life, the more you think that, yeah, this is the point, that I cannot go forward, that's me use the moment to make it opportunities for you. The obstacles always turn into opportunity. This is very important to know when we are like young people, teenagers, when we think, oh, why me? Why me? Is the life happening this to me? I'm going just to go uh, backward and nothing will happen. So this is how is our logo is talking about and what we mean by inspiration economy and what we do. The second message I want to talk about that is uh, who are the inspiring students? We've done a big study, this is a message for the teachers here. We've done a study for all the students in higher education in uh, last year of secondary education in Bahrain. And we found that inspiring students, not always necessary to be the A students. It's good to be A students, but not always A students are inspiring the students. They are good to get the memory, but now only getting the memory is not the most important thing because the whole the books I teach 
Boy Scout. On, on my Latin education, you can put in a small card, chip card that costs a few hundred of um, rupees. The most important thing for you is to associate your knowledge. This is the lesson card we're going to do. So the inspiring students are students who associate the knowledge they know from the box, from school to school, from school of life, from what their discipline is, from what is other discipline. So regardless, you are from medical, engineering, science, social, economy, mix these together. You will always have a better flesh to eat. You are always going to have a better thing to learn from to the life. So one of the main things for inspiring students were students who learn more from school of life than school of school. School of school, you teach, you learn, then you get the exam. School of life, you get the exam, then you learn from the thing. So the more you are ready for school of life, you will be ready for the school of school. Second thing we found that people who work in volunteer work, it's very important to work in volunteer work. You are going to learn much more than even from what you learn from a paid work. You learn here in school a lot. Your teachers do the best to teach you. You have the best curriculum, you have the best education. But the things you are going to learn when you work voluntarily, when you get from your time freely, the return back is much higher than any money. The experience you will get, what will make your CV different? What will make you even able to associate things? To associate what you learn in your practice life from what you learn in your curriculum as working in volunteer work. The second thing we found that people who know to speak more than one languages. I hope my English is understandable to, for everyone. Yes. Am I not too fast? Okay. So the more languages we speak, it makes us, make us more inspiring people. Because we try to think in a different way. Now when I think in Arabic, I start from right. When I think in English, I start from left. I speak Persian, I think in a different way. Because I speak Persian, I understand Indian more. So the more languages you know, the more you are going to use your brain in different ways. And this is one of the things that you are very lucky here in India that also you have lots of your own languages as well. So this is helping you to think every time in a different way and be able to understand each other and even other uh, community. So, and the third thing we found that most uh, most these students who come from families who have real problems, either financial problems, something with chronic diseases, they have like parents, uh, separated parents, or one of them in cancer, disability. So because they have more problems, they are able more to be inspiring students in the real life. Because they have so real obstacles in their life. They were not like spoiled children who didn't see anything. So this, as soon as they go to the life, they immediately get shocked. Because they never saw anything that did it in their life that they think everything is difficult for them. So don't think that if you have any problems in your family, in your life, in your day to day, whatever it is, it's a bad thing. This is the thing that's going to give you more opportunity and chances. This is going to turn these obstacles to opportunity. Because through these obstacles, you've learned much more that others were not able to learn. You cannot pay for this tuition to learn for from these problems. This is a chance that you and only you are going to get. So make it an opportunity to uh, learn from. And the more you live in a diverse community, and this is one of the very lucky countries in the world you are, the more you live in a diverse community, you learn much more and get inspiring. People who live always with one ethnicity, one religion, one background, they don't learn a lot. They think all of, all of the world is around what they think. Whatever my belief is, that's the right thing. But the more I learn to go to different schools, learn there and today with my ears, Hindus, Muslim, Christian, no matter what are their religion is, this diversity gives me more opportunity. You are very lucky to live in a diverse community and to be resilient with each other. I don't have to copy each other, but I'm resilient to live with them and they live with me. This is one of the opportunities that you have here. So see the richnesses that you are having in this small, uh, college in this area that you are in, that you are much richer than the other community uh, and other countries in the world. And here are the things that can make you really add inspiring students and change the world. I'm not going to talk more. 
I'll give some chance to Dr. Mohammed Bohaji, he's much better than me, he's the founder, so he can talk more about this topic. Put our head down the floor, 
This is why? Because it's the thing about it. Okay? Because this is the most important clue that control our ability to associate things. Most of us, we can't associate things with life. Okay? We can't associate why we are studying with the, uh, our parents in life sometimes. Okay? And I can tell you now, I challenge all of you here, including the teacher, most of us, we don't have a clear purpose in life. We know that we are working, we know we are working very hard, we know when to, to be pharmacists or professors or uh, physicists and so on, or nurses, but we don't know what is, what is the thing to our purpose. Because each one of us came for a specific purpose in this life. Your purpose is different than your purpose. Each one of us has a different purpose. And this purpose you have to search for it. God has given you the brain and this plant can do specifically so that you differentiate yourself from the animal, as you said, right? And the nearest animal to us, by the way, is the chimpanzee. And, and he or, or she, it is totally different than us. Why? Because they are, our mental group is much more developed, much more sophisticated than other groups are very similar. Okay? The only thing is this frontal group because it has the ability to associate and analyze things as much and look for problem solving. Okay. Knowing that, the most dangerous thing also about a, a different than the brain is our mind. Can you tell me where we can find our mind? Where can we find our mind? Can we find it? Is it physical? Yes or no? So, sorry? Yes or no? No, say no, okay, if you know what the answer, say no. So it is, it is what they call it the tool of the brain. But it is, we can't see it, isn't it? Some people, some religions, like Islam, Hindu, they believe that the brain might be not only in the, I mean the mind, not only in the brain. Okay? The mind, it might be also in the heart. Okay? Hindu religion, Muslim religion, they say the same. Okay? So the, uh, the mind is controlled by many body, and many things in the, uh, in the body. Okay? So uh, the most important thing about the mind is the mindset. The mind controls the mindset. What is the mindset? Who can tell me what is the mindset? Did you hear? Lots of people they say, oh this guy has a different mindset. Oh this uh, person has a different mindset. What do you mean by mindset? Okay? Or someone tell you, oh your mindset has changed. Okay, what does it mean? Anybody? Next, yes. Give them a pause again for our brother here. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, this lecture, don't say that it is compulsory. But somehow, sometime, our director, our, our, they want us to be here, so we are present here. Try to enjoy it. Try to attack. Try to learn. Okay, and your learning will be much better when you get involved with the speaker. Yeah. Sir, my six something. That we are developing certain period of time. Excellent. Give me an applause. So, one is the development of our time. This is the development of our time. It's called what? It's called assumptions. And some of us call it paradigm. Those of you know, the lay people, they call it paradigm. We, we see that in the WhatsApp, they say paradigm, paradigm. What means paradigm? Okay? It is actually the collection of assumptions. Okay? So our assumptions will, uh, will block us from lots of things. So the first thing in the mindset we have to worry about in our life, in order to change our life, is what? Our, our assumptions. Okay? The second thing, the assumptions, what they do? Why assumptions very difficult? Very difficult to change, very dangerous. Okay? If your assumption about that everybody is against you. Everything in life is against you. God has given you a, a very, what, let's say, a, poor, a poorly life or a, a challenging life. And the other people, are, the rich people or the people successful, they are better than you. Your mindset will control you against being a really successful person. Or a person that will influence others. Okay? So the first thing is be careful about your assumptions. Okay? Because I'm talking about you about three things. If you change them yourself, you are going to change your life and you can change the life of others. Okay? Like Gandhi. You can really you can reach the level even of Gandhi. Okay. I come from a very small country. You know what's right? Some of you maybe don't know what's right. And if you see it in the, in the map, the natural side of the map or the 
that you are if you are receiving, you do not see the Bahrain. It is very small, but actually it is smaller than the man, this city, okay, the whole city of uh, what's the name of the city? Huh? Right. Right. Okay. So it is smaller than it's very small uh, island. Okay. So nobody cares who am I or who, from where I come. What, what you care about? What I'm telling you now is I'm working on the principle that is changing the world. Okay. So I'm telling you from experience. Three things are going to make you a differentiated person, a lady or a, a, a man that's going to change the world. It doesn't matter from where you come, who, who, what is your religion, what is your ethnicity, what is your language, it doesn't matter, what's your color, color, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you can change the world with these three principles. The first principle is the mindset. And the mindset is made from what I said, the first one, career, assumptions, excellent, okay? First thing is assumptions. The second thing is attitude. Why the assumption is uh, dangerous? Because it controls our attitudes. Our attitudes why we are studying nursing. Our attitude of dealing with others. Because by the way, if your attitude you don't like to deal with people, and you don't have this, the practice of being very sympathetic with people, you might not be a suitable nurse. Even though you acknowledge you might be an A student. Like Dr. Tony was saying, okay? So this is part of the story, okay? Very important that we have an attitude that will help us to deliver the profession that we are in, okay? In order to be a differentiated person, okay? As I said, at the end of the day, we came here for a purpose. The, second, the third thing that I'm talking about, the mindset, is the behaviors. What, what will attitude will, will do with us? It will control our Behavior. You know the difference between attitude and behavior? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. You tell me yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so I want to see what you are, what, uh, what is the difference? Even if you are wrong, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a pause. Yes. Now, what is the difference? Uh, yes, ma'am. Give her a pause. Person. 
Why? Because he had this mindset. Okay. He had this assumption. He controlled his assumptions. Uh, and he managed to put, instead of assumptions, the word visualization. Okay. So visualization is very important because, because it, will, it is the bridge that will take us to another place. Okay. This place is called curiosity. So there is a bridge between now what? A mindset and to be a curious. What is it? To have a visualization. And you, if you want to be a visualizing person, a visualizing leader, a strong leader, you have to visualize where you will be after 50 years from now. 30 years from now. 50 years from now. Now many governments is asking us for consultancy. I am a consultant for many governments. I'm reducing now because most of my time I'm giving it for communities and traveling all over the world. But I did most of my work in the last 30 years giving advices to governments. They are working now in what they call future foresight. Some governments are working for 100 years from now. Because they know they can change today so that they can change tomorrow. Okay? They don't wait for tomorrow to happen and they will deal with it as a crisis. Like we are doing most of the time here. Okay? Same thing for you. You need to visualize where you will be after 30 years from now. This question is very important. So tonight, don't sleep without planning where you'll be after five years from now. I'm not asking you for 30 years, maybe it's very difficult. But who will you will be after 30 years? What is your income? Who, what is your influence in like your community? At, at what is standard? Who, which NGO you'll be going to work with? Because without NGO, you cannot contribute to the community. Okay. And for that, we always say, very important that you have university, and thank you. And, and here I'd like to thank this guy, Afraj Allah of Afraj. Brother Afraj. Can you give him applause? I get up in the night, people are sleeping. I don't sleep sometimes, working for long hours. 
because it's linked to mine. I know if I don't do it now, it will affect my visualization after five years. So it's very important that you link your visualization plus your curiosity so that you become focused. So what is the formula for, for focus? If anyone tell you why you're not focused, you tell him you're right. You don't have visualization and you, are, you don't have curiosity. Okay? So let's now talk about curiosity. Okay? Now we know that we have a mindset that we need to control, which means the four, four things. We need to think about the bridge, which is what? Visualization. And now we're going for another important place, which is called curiosity. What is the difference between any human that is inspiring and he's solving problems of his community, his life, whatever, a good leader and a bad leader, a good professor and a bad professor. The difference between, real difference between them, they are curious. They are curious, are they, their students are happy, are they learning, not, not, not teaching them, are they learning? Because there is still no difference between learning and education. Okay? Learning means that your mindset is changing. Right? Learning means, what does it mean when someone asks you, I'm learning, okay? Your mindset is changing. Uh, when you, uh, if you study, it doesn't mean you are learning. So remember, uh, if you study, it doesn't mean you are learning. Learning means that your mindset is always changing and changing and changing. So what I wanted to tell you here, being curious, means it, meaning that always you are asking, why I am doing that? Okay? Then you are always asking, yes. You know what the chips we have here? 
is called the formula supply versus demand. So all of us we think is that the whole world is all about what? Supply versus demand. For example, let's say that you don't have scholarship to continue your master's or your PhD. And you want to finish your PhD. This is the difference that the question that I ask everyone to check whether he's inspired or not. If he has any aim in life, and there's always a in his life. You don't have enough fund. What he will do? Because I don't have enough fund, now I will not do with my PhD. But it means that he don't have a life purpose. Because if someone has a life purpose, even if he swept the floor, he's still going to do his PhD, isn't it? So this is the difference between a, pers a person that having uh, working for development and a person working for growth. Hello. The, the development formula is not supply versus demand. It's capacity versus demand. So I raise my capacity to deal with the challenges in my life because the life is about three C's. Okay? It's about what? It's about chances. It's about challenges. It's about change. Three C's in your life are always the play. Very important in changing your life situation. Where you'll be up, you'll be less than before. You'll be drug addict, God forbid. You'll be alcoholic. You'll be a husband that you meet uh, his wife. You'll be a person that you'll be rich, but you'll be uh, corrupted. Or you'll be a person that is working for the benefit of the community. You're professional, but still you're working in you. That's a belief that a person is contributing and doing development of health. If you're a professional, yes. You are not giving a contribution to the community different than your profession, you are doing growth. But if you become a professional physicist, or chemist, or, ph or pharmacist, but still you are part of, part of, you are doing part of your, even your holidays, you are spending it to, to help the poor people, to give them, for example, the, the proper uh, drugs, give them the proper uh, direction, how to use the drugs and so on, then you are a good pharmacist. Okay. So this is now the third part. So the second stone. The first stone is, uh, we said about what? The mindset, right? The second stone is about the curiosity. The bridge between that was what? Visualization. Now in all that to move towards the third stone, which is very important stone for our life, and most of us, we, we talk about it, but we don't know how and what's its formula, okay? The main formula for the third stone it's about what? It's about availability. The word that is maybe lots of us, we don't know what is it. It's availability. Being available in the right place, in the right time. Always be ready. We call it sometimes, didn't they give you some classes in emergency? Right? You give them ABC training or something like this. I think you should, in pharmacy and nurses, they should know ABC training, CPR, and so on. How to do emergency occupation, uh, evacuation, disaster, how to uh, again uh, get me, uh, you know, if I am now get dropped here. Do you, can you help me? Or just watch? You call the uh, ambulance. Okay? You call the ambulance. Thank you very much. While you are the nurses. Okay, no. You're supposed to know all these practices, which is about ABC and so So, what I'm saying here is that very important that we know the word availability it means alert. Being uh, ready, okay, and readiness does not come unless we have the first two stones, okay. The first two stones is very important to come to this level, okay. That we are be, be, in order to become competitive. The third stone, the first stone is very important, which is the mindset. We have a purpose in life. We have a visualization to make us focus, and then we go to the second one, which is what? Second stone. Second stone. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Give an applause for uh, our sister, yeah, the professor. Okay. Curiosity. Okay. And then we go to the third stone, which is about competitiveness. The bridge from curiosity to competitiveness is what? Is availability. Is being ready. Okay. Being ready always. And readiness needs what we call proactiveness. We need to be proactive. In order to be competitive, we need three, for, uh, three things, and then I'll conclude because I think uh, too much information will get you lost, okay? Okay, then I'll summarize for you again and maybe test some of you, okay? So, in order to be competitive, we have these three, uh, three uh, things that must be. The first bridge is what? 
availability. The second branch is efficiency. Because you might be available, but you are not efficient, so you are wasting lots of money and you can't continue your, your, your uh, achieving your goals. Okay? And when you are becoming efficient and available, most probably you'll be more effective. Not necessarily, but most probably you'll be more effective. You'll be effective so much that you might be similar in the world of Gandhi and other people. Martin Luther King, Mandela, all these people that is Akhil Kalam, all those who influence our life by their needs. Okay? So can you repeat for me now? I, I said about three stones without the professors. Okay, what are the three stones I talk about? Very important for our life in order to create a legacy. Okay, we have a conference about creating a legacy. Okay. Why we talk about legacy? Because many people they live without legacy. They might have a legacy for money. I am one person, I might even money. Okay, for my children, cars and so on, and this is most of the other world. But do they really leave a legacy? They leave money, but is it a legacy? In reality, it's not a legacy. People don't have a legacy. But if people is going to sometimes fight over it, it doesn't mean a legacy. Okay? So, uh, what is the three stones again? I said, it's very important to our life in order to create an impact. First stone, yes. Give an applause for our friend there. Yes, please, please, please. What's your name? Sorry? Hello. Isha. Availability. Efficiency. Is for what the bridge is for competitiveness. In order to move from curiosity to competitiveness, which is more difficult, real competitiveness. Okay, not not being a student. A student doesn't mean you're competitive. Huh? You might have good memorizing, especially uh, those in pharmacy and nursing. Maybe physics uh, need to be uh, more applied. But pharmacy and maybe you have good memory. And you memorize lots of things, anatomy, whatever, okay? Uh, the name of the drugs in the pharmacy and so on. In reality, making an A student sometimes is not practical, it's very dangerous to the society. We want people, might be B students, but still they are contributing to the community. Okay? So the, this was the, the bridges for a couple. But the, the main three stones I want you to remember today is what? Being, first of all, control of our mindset. Right? Being in control that we be more curious and being in control that we become more competitive. Okay? And the mindset, what you need to be careful about? Your assumptions. Right? And then your attitudes. And then your behavior. And then your reflections. Okay? In order to become a focused person, I need this bridge between the, the mindset and the curiosity, which is what? Visualization. Okay, give her applause. Who said that? This man here. Give her applause. Okay. See now, it doesn't matter your, your knowledge. See, even though she's a professor, it doesn't matter because she is focused and she's becoming interested. She's becoming curious. For that, she is answering like she is now. She knows all these things. Okay. Because this is a new. I, I claim that this is not available in all the books. Very few books, and one of them is uh, these books. Most of, the, of them. Recently, it's my books. I'm talking about this because it's relevant to my whatever I'm doing. Okay, I'm taking, I have to have taken it from someone else and from some experiences before me, but I'm not the one who's most writing, uh, writing about this in practice and so on. Okay? So again, very important. Don't leave this, this now without understanding that you have to become curious. Ask always why? Why I'm doing this? Why I'm studying this subject? Why, what is the importance of it? What I'm doing with it later? How can I improve uh, my understanding of subject, such subject? Okay? Very important. Because without understanding why, you cannot differentiate yourself. And when you understand why, you understand what uh, very well. Okay? Because most of us, always I tell the Arab world, especially. Okay? Most of us, we always look, look for how. Okay? And I tell the Arab world, most of you, always you say, how, 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 how. Which means what? Like those. Without respect. You have to understand first what? Why you are doing this? Is it relevant to your purpose or not? Anything you are doing. Even if you are setting up an exam. A, a teacher putting an exam. Why you are putting this exam? Oh, because of the higher education. I know that's because of 
higher education requirement. But why we can't do it open exam? Maybe open exam is better than closed exam. I am one who always call for multidisciplinary open exam. Okay? Because I am not measuring the memory of the students. I'm not, I'm measuring their practical way. Okay? Their practical understanding. How they can apply it. Okay? So maybe sometime, even when I put exam, I, I'm testing it. What is my purpose as a teacher? What will differentiate my students? Take it into consideration. Take it into consideration. Not blindly following higher education. Okay? Because higher education is written by people like us. It's not, not uh, God, not, didn't come from God. So also they have some mistakes there. Okay? So again, the three stones, repeat after me, what? Mindset. Mindset. No, repeat. Mindset. Yeah. 
first we can start in the productivity research. Thank you very much. <laughs> 